everybody, welcome back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is the chief legal analyst for CNN and the anchor of Laura Coates Live. Please welcome to the Late Show, Laura Coates. Nice to have you on. Thank you. See I'm you so first. happy. Uh, I've, I've never had you on before. It's, it's nice to talk. I like talking to our friends over at CNN about the, the events of the day. Have you done late night shows before? I, I have done um, a few, my own, sometimes. Yeah. Oh, I understand, like... but it's like a little bit of your news <laughs> channel. No, it's a little bit different, yeah. I oh, you not... actually are on from 11 to 12, right? I am, but don't tell CNN because I'm supposed to be in the bathroom right now, I told them. Wow. <laughs> but... So I want to talk about how you got into uh, into this uh, gig. You, you, you were you were in private practice mm -hmm. as a lawyer, then a federal prosecutor. Yep. For how long? Uh, well, don't ask my age. Hold on a second. No. What's getting ready to happen you right now? You started at age nine. How long? Oh, were you I a did. Federal it was prosecutor? actually. Seven. I was there for about five years as a federal prosecutor. Where? And before, Where? In Washington D.C. Which, okay. And before that, I was in private practice in Minnesota and also Manhattan. And although. I don't know why I said the state of Minnesota and then Manhattan, like it was his own place, but Minnesota and then Manhattan. Mm -hmm, about the same um, population. Sure. Sh sure. It's true, it's yeah, true. Yeah, don't you know. Well, tell me, let me ask you about federal prosecutors. Federal prosecutors, they seem like a serious bunch. Yeah. We hear about them a lot these days because of various trials going on around the United mm -hmm. States. I've heard. Was, is it, what, what kind of a gig is that? Is that a high pressure, high tension, like do you, <sighs> you're pulling out your hair in that kind of a job? It is the kind of job where you expect it to be perfect at all times and you have no time to be. There's, you are expected to be perfect. You're expected to be perfect. Okay. You can't make a mistake. There's not the infinite amount of resources, but you know there's the weight of, can you imagine your name on the other side of United States versus? And although we have a presumption of innocence in this country, I think people overwhelmingly will think to themselves, well, they wouldn't have charged you if you hadn't done something, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have to uphold not only your position as a prosecutor to be fair, but really you are the lawyer on behalf of the jurisdiction, but also the defendant as well. I mean, that person's rights matter to you as much as the person and the community you're prosecuting on behalf of. And you have enormous resources as a federal prosecutor. When the feds are coming for you, make a deal because mm -hmm. they'll, they'll never run out of resources. They might, there might be reasons why the case is called off, but it's, they can just keep going. And yet I could never get two legal pads in the same week. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. So, so then you became CNN's chief uh, uh, legal, analyst, legal yeah. analyst, and now you've got your own show. Well, how was the transition from law to the media for you? Well, you know, I, I thought I had big personalities to deal with in a courtroom, but then I joined the media. Sure. And behind the scenes, there's a, there's a whole different level of personality that takes place. A sure. lot of people feel, um, well, I'll just leave it there. Because <laughs> I got to go to work. Know, I got to go to we work. We all know Anderson <laughs> Cooper is a monster. <laughs> I mean, man. Okay, let's talk about this hush money trial. Yeah. We hear a lot about it. We talk about it a lot. You know, there's no camera inside, so it's mm -hmm. not quite as uh, arresting as, say, like an OJ trial because... Yeah. You got to see that every day. Mm -hmm. Break down the basic argument on both sides for us here. The basics are this. Both sides are kind of framing it incorrectly. The prosecution is saying it's- Says this former said, federal yeah. prosecutor. Um, well, okay. there you go. They say it's a hush money trial. The other side says, no, this is just a shakedown. But in reality, it's about transparency, right? You want to know as a voter that you have all the information in front of you to make an informed decision and vote. And if somebody is trying to undermine the opportunity to do so, you ought to know about it. And that's what this case is about. Did somebody have information or make a campaign contribution or try to prevent the public from knowing information they otherwise would have wanted to know before they voted? Some, some people... Is it, is it that, you know, uh, the, the things that uh, David Pecker and the National Enquirer did for Trump were an un, unregistered campaign contribution? Is that yeah. part of the crime? So the crime is not a catch and kill, basically, right? The idea of, I want your story, I'm going to buy the rights, I want no one else to hear it because I have a reason I want to hold it for myself, I may never publish it. That's the catch and kill. That happens, frankly, all the time. But what doesn't happen is that you do it in a way to try to prevent having to report a campaign contribution. There are limits to that. Mm -hmm. And if you, do, if you do not report that, the crime is that you are shielding something, you're hiding something. The trick here is gonna be whether you can prove why they did it. Was it just because he was trying to prevent his family from knowing? 
He says, I'm a family man, and I would never cheat on my wife. <laughs> you, can, you can say that. And this is I mean, an impartial there, jury there you go. I'm just, I'm just saying, right, right? There's that, there's that. Mm. But then the prosecution is going to say, no, no, you were doing it because you were trying to do it for the benefit of the campaign. And if that's even a little bit true, that's enough. We talk a little, a little bit, we talk a lot a bit about... <laughs> him falling asleep, because it's so exciting that when, <laughs> when he's someplace where he can't hide every so often yeah. and have another burger break, he, <laughs> he falls asleep like any 78-year-old man would. Yeah. And um, we, as we said tonight, his lawyers seem, uh, you know, concerned about that. Yeah. You know, they're going everything short of poking him with a hot stick to keep him awake. If you're their lawyer, would you be concerned about your client being asleep during this? What's the downside of him taking, catching some Z's? I mean, he can't possibly pretend that he's woke. <laughs> What's he gonna do? <laughs> okay. Okay, another big story in the legal world. Um, the, the New York Court of Appeals, which is the highest court yeah. here in New York, has overturned Harvey Weinstein's 2020 conviction in New York yeah. uh, on felony sex crime charges. Um, was that surprising to you? Mm -hmm. uh, and you say there might be some implication for that in the Trump case. It's a really fascinating split screen that's happening, right? So whenever you're trying to prove your case, you sometimes want to bring information about the person that might not have been charged before, right? It's called a prior bad act. And I want to bring it up to show people that you got an MO situation. And I want to bring these in to show the jury it wasn't just a one-off, this is what's being done. But you have to be really careful when you do that. If you bring in, say, for Harvey Weinstein's case, multiple people who have accused him of the same thing that are not the actual victim that is alleged in this crime, you run the risk of showing that this person must have done this because they had done other bad things. And you gotta, like, if you're in a relationship with someone, right, and you're having an argument, mm -hmm. you have to fight about what the fight's about. You can't bring up everything else. You're talking about... Are you well, gonna, I took the garbage right. out. I know, but we're talking about making dinner tonight, baby, right? right. Oh, that seems very close to home. Sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, hold on. This seems very... It was a whole thing on Tuesday. But the point is, you got to fight about what the fight's about. And if you bring in everything else, now what are we fighting about? Is it that I'm just a bad person or that they actually committed the crime? And so for the Trump case, they got to be careful about how much they bring in about the M.O., are you talking about a, f a falsified business record? Or are you talking about catch and kill stories more broadly? You got to prove that not just a bad actor, but that they committed this crime. Laura, thank you so much thank for being so here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Laura Coates Live airs weeknights on CNN. Laura Coates, everybody. We'll be right back.